Hey guys, I'm here today with a cool project that came to me because I went to the art retreat and I overpacked, had to buy a second suitcase to drag stuff home. I have learned my lesson. <laughs> so what I decided to do is I decided to make my own little cheat book to carry with me for my doodles. Um, most of the doodles I get are off of Pinterest, Tangle.com, and out of uh, Zentangle books that I have bought over the years. I can't drag all that stuff with me, and I usually don't like to use my computer or my electronics in a place that has no secured Wi-Fi. So this was my answer to do this. I accidentally stumbled onto this woman named Emily, and I hope I pronounced her last name correctly, Houts. She is E-N-A-J-Y Lime on Flickr. I found her via Pinterest, and on her Flickr account, she has all these great... Let me show you one that's really intact still. I've been cutting them up. She has these great sheets that are free to download and print on your computer of different kinds of doodle patterns. I don't know which ones are Zentangle. I don't really care. Um, the downside is there are no step outs to show you how she got this this way. And there are no names attached to any of these sheets. If you go to her Flickr account, you will see, and I'll put it in the description box below, you will see how she has pictures of how she used her doodles in the most creative ways and how she made a doodle toolbox. I'm not going that far, but I want to have something small to carry with me in my purse or in my art bag that has doodles that I can do. Um, I know a lot of doodles, but I'd like to learn some more, so I printed off, I don't know how many I got of these things, six or eight of these sheets, and I did the full the full size printout. It gives you options for different sizes on Flickr. I did the full printout, not the large, but the full original. And I got four times five. You get 20 per sheet. So I have over a hundred of these now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, where's my other one? I'm going to take A, an already made book cover that I did a while ago. Remember I told you how it cracked on the side when I used the um, UTE embossing? So I'm going to use this as my little book. I don't care if it's covered on the inside. It's just for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little booklet to carry in my art supplies of these patterns or I can leave I, to take with me or I can leave it at home and put it next to my table where I art at night when I watch TV. So I already had a magazine that I had cut up and these are a little too large for this. They're a little, little too big. So I'm going to measure them and trim the back because I have some that are already sewn together with the three hole pamphlet stitch. Then I'm going to take, and I, I figured this out when I kind of I cut these out, there will be plenty to put two of these on every page of the signatures, and I will put as many as I can get in this book without it developing alligator mouse so bad I can't deal with it. So I'm going to see how many signatures I can get in here. I'd like to put four or five, but we'll see how it goes. All right, let me cut these down and I'll be back to show you what I've come up with.
Okay, so I found um, two rolls of duct tape that are very plain, that I like the colors. I'm not going to use the Tyvek tape because it says Tyvek all over it, and I don't want to use that here. And since I'm not covering up the Tyvek tape in, inside, maybe I don't want to advertise for Tyvek in my stuff. So I was thinking either the purple or the teal. I don't know which one looks better. I know people are going, purple, purple, teal, teal. I like the purple. All right, let's go with the purple. This has never been opened yet. Okay, so I have some needles. Uh, since this is going to be a very stiff go, I want a more sturdy needle. It looks okay. And I've talked in the past about threads that I use. I have used dental floss in the past, but I have a drawer here that's nothing but the wax linen thread. And I really like it, but it leaves big holes and stuff. So... Let me see if I can find something that doesn't leave such big holes in my stuff that I have enough of. Oh, look, see, it's everywhere. <laughs> Okay, so I have all three of the signatures sewn in. I got a little wonky on this one right here, but I'm okay with that. And if I don't really like it, I'll just put another piece of tape over it and you would never even notice. Because I'm good at covering it up. <laughs> Alright, so all my little pieces don't hang out on the cover anywhere, so that's a good thing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and cut out all of these. I have different, lots of pages of them, the ones that I really want to keep, and I'm going to glue two to a page. I don't really, like I said earlier, care if anybody sees that it's a magazine. I'm just using this for something to drag around with me, and it's going to be able to take a lot of wear and tear because I use that duct tape on it. If this was any other book, it might not farewell so and I don't like I said I don't care I see this this is just for my personal use if it had to be pretty I sure wouldn't be making it so let me go and cut all these little squares out and glue them in and I'll come back with the finished product 
Okay, after spending hours and hours printing off and cutting up page after page after page of these little squares, I finally finished the book late last night. This is what it looks like. I found a hairband uh, that came off of something else that stretched out good enough that it's gonna use, I'm gonna use it to close with for now. So here's the book. I decided instead of putting something, you know, to cover up this stuff, I went ahead and took two here and two here and put them on the ends because, you know, it was extra space and it helps to cover it up. This was not about being pretty, was not about being perfect. It was just about being a prompt book for me for while I doodle at night and watch TV or maybe on a trip where I can't remember stuff that I know. There are no names for any of these, so if you're trying to look any of these up, you need to go to, I think it's tanglepatterns.com, where there's free things there. Um, they're in alphabetical order. You will, uh, If you stumble onto these, believe me, it'll be a sheer accident because um, there's a lot of tangle patterns on there, doodle patterns. Anyway, so I glued, you know, just glued on ones that I cut out that I really liked, and the whole book is full of them. And it was a cool project. Didn't cost anything to make it. It took a lot of time only because I cut out each one of these individually. I didn't use the paper cutter. I don't know. I just felt like using scissors. Yes, I know. I do everything the hard way, like I said before. <laughs> so there's that. But what I wanted to show you is what came of what I did. So last night, let me uh, let me find a piece of cardboard. Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. So last night, I decided what I would where well, this glass of water. Um, what I would do is I would use the patterns in the book to prove a point. And this is what I came up with last night. Do I need to go in? In well, not by much. Okay, so I just took pictures from the book and I made this. These are all patterns that came from a book. None of these are um, thought of from my brain. I just copied them right off the patterns from the little book, you know, from this little book here. I thought it was pretty cool. It was super easy. All right, so this, uh, so after I finished that, I could not sleep last night. For love nor money so I decided that I would do a second page so then I started this one and yes these are all out of that same book isn't that cool it all it is is just the little teeny pictures now these don't always look exactly the way it is in the book you know you got to add your own little spin to it your own little flair I'm trying to look for one of the ones that I saw that I have in here that you can, you're looking at right now. I should have. There you go. Uh, nope, that's not the one. I should have put a post-it note on it. Well, this one is this. Let me back out. That way you can see what I'm talking about. So this and this. And no, they're not exactly alike, but it gave me an idea of where to go. Um, this are those. Um, these are these. Uh, this one did not go as well as I thought it might. <laughs> That's this right there. It doesn't even look like the picture, but it came out okay. The, these are these right here where I modified, where I colored in every other one and then put a line in between every other black spot where I colored in. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Beep, beep, dee, dee, dee. I'm trying to find the one. Oh, um, none of these. None of those. <laughs> oh my goodness. This one is this along here. You know, you can adapt things. This one right here is this. I did not put the little dots. This has little lines around here and then the lines in between them. I did not do that. I left it as an open space. I probably could have put the lines in there. 
and the little dots, but I left it the way it was. These right here are those. So I used the book. When I go away, oh, and this one right here are these and that I made into roses, and then I used another one for the leaves. So little books like this help, help to spur things, creative. There you go. Those are kind of those. So little books like this help to spur on some creativity from your brain when you forget other things. I use this. And there's those right there as a fence between the roses and this. So it's just how you feel inspired from the little book. Maybe there's patterns in here you'd forgotten about or you've never used. And it sparks creativity on your part. Um, if you're a beginner, it might be a little harder to do some of the more complex patterns where you don't know what order they put stuff in. Some of them are super duper easy, like this one right here. This might be a little hard for beginners because you have to understand how the order goes. But the rest of these are pretty easy. This one might be a little hard. The stuff that looks more dimensional usually is a little has a couple extra steps in it that's going to take some thoughtfulness. This. Um, this one. This one. So if you're a beginner, pick out the easiest ones you think you can accomplish and put them in a book and and then put a title on it say beginner book and then as you progress you can make more of these little books and keep creating I used this pattern to do something but I only used half the pattern which is this one right here so you adapt them you use them and you end up creating really cool stuff all right, so that's it for this one. I just wanted to share with you how you can take things from the internet, things that you have at home, to create something that you can use in the future. It's small enough, it'll fit in your purse. Take a micron pin, you can fold up, put a pocket in here, fold up a little piece of paper so you can doodle on a little piece of paper. You can carry a traveler's notebook with you of some sort, uh, and then just doodle on the inside of it with your little book. I hope you guys enjoyed this idea. I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, I thought I was done with this video, but I decided after I had already shut it off, downloaded it to YouTube, got it ready to publish, that I really needed to finish what I had talked about in the video. So this is what I did. Um, let me go in. In. This is what I did for the closure. I just put a little thin piece of uh, elastic underneath the pamphlet stitch stuff, tied a knot in it, and then I'm just going to have it hold it like this. I'm not looking for anything fancy or cutesy. I just want it to stay closed so that when it goes on the bookcase, it's not like, you know, this thick. So I don't have a lot of space. So in order to know which book I'm in, I just, I had some pre-cut stuff in a notebook that I had stored away for a while and I never use them and so I'm trying to use up things that I have. So this is what I did. Doodle journal prompts number one. This is the one that I did that's the on the magazine and it's not pretty. It's just functional. All right, and then I said that if you wanted to make something really nice that you could and I thought, well, that's just silly because I can do that. So I did this one the same way with a thin elastic and I wrote the name wrong on this, but I basically know what it is. This is a little book I already had made, so I measured my Kool-Aid dyed paper. The inside was covered, and then I put two here, like I did the other book, two here. And this is all um, Kool-Aid dyed paper that I cut up into, str into pieces, and then I glued two per page. And there's a nice looking one. And again, it's functional, it's easy, it's small that I could carry it in my purse. And now I want to show you what I did. This is, let me go back out. Move this stuff off of here, sorry. This is what I did over a two-page spread. Now I showed you guys this one in the other video. This one is from, some of it's from this book right here, the, the number two book. 
and there it is. You don't have to have expensive things to doodle or, you know, even a, listen, one of my favorite doodle pens currently are these um, R2 rollerball pens that are um, at the Dollar Tree. They're, let's see, I have a black one, a teal blue, a navy blue, and an orange. I'd like a red and a green and a yellow, but I don't know if they have those. The only problem with these is they do bleed and they also, um, they bleed through paper, but the worst part is if you go to put gloss medium over them, which I did with um, something in the art journal habit 2018. Um, if you brush a medium or anything over them, they do do bleed and do smear. That's the only downside to these. So if you're going to use these, I would buy a spray fixative first, and then you can do your gloss medium over it if you need extra protection. But doing watercolor inside anything you draw with these is a really bad idea. So that's the end of the video. Now I just wanted to show you what the possibilities are. I just copied stuff out of these two little journals that I made and made these two pages. I don't think I used any of the patterns twice on here. I think every one of them is something different from the two books. So it's a possibility. You can carry around a little traveler's notebook. You, like I said in the other in the other part of the video, you can put a pocket in here, slip some paper in here. You have an ink pen with you. And if you're looking for an inexpensive hobby to try out and see if you really like it, this is the perfect way to do it. Okay, now I'm going to post my video. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.